Good evening, gang. It's Chris Angel coming at you for another episode of Marketing for the Rest of Us. And tonight, I want to talk about how some of you are leaning on marketing to do too much of the heavy lifting. You're, you're, you're posting something and then expecting the post to produce these results that um, in this day and age just doesn't happen that way. So let's unpack this, shall we? Um, the, obviously, marketing um, is important. Uh, and let's define that a little bit. Marketing to me is about how you continually post your content, content marketing, right? Through things like Facebook, YouTube, uh, your blog posts, whatever. You creating content and sharing it with the world through multiple platforms. That is content marketing. And the good part about content marketing is that it allows people, if they find you, it allows them to get to know you and feel like they know you um, and if they like you, they stay for more, right? So uh, in other words, a relationship can get built and developed over time simply through you creating content and those who like the content and your perspective come back for more. So that is the good part about content marketing is it creates relationship at scale, okay? It creates relationship at scale. I've said this before, I'll say it again. If I go somewhere uh, and people have seen me or heard my show, they're like, oh my gosh, I feel like I know you and I've never met them. But that is the power of when you know how to access your truth and share something in a powerful and authentic way, people feel like they already know you. And that is perfect. That's what we want in a day and age where there's a lot of noise in marketing and everybody's posting and broadcasting. What we want is for people to feel like they know you and like you and trust you. So content marketing does that. But here's where I notice a lot of people get stuck is they start to then think that all I have to do is post on social media and people will want to buy my thing. Whether you have online programs or you have some type of brick and mortar business. Listen, whatever your business is, right? Most of my people are online service providers like coaches, holistic practitioners, etc. It takes more in this day, especially when you're starting out. If you don't have thousands and thousands or tens of thousands of followers, if you don't have a ginormous email list, if you don't spend thousands of dollars a day on Facebook ads, which is where most of us are at, then, you can, then it doesn't work to just post on Facebook and then hope that somebody buys your program or hires you for your service. There's more to it than that. Now, I think content marketing does a lot of the heavy lifting on the front end of you being able to have a stream of inspiration that you can invite people into. But when it comes time to you inviting people into your programs, okay, now we have to get a little bit more uh, gorilla, if you will. We have to get a little bit, we, have to, we do have to dive into some of the connection, the connection work, the co having conversations. Let's say it that way. You need, to have, you need to start having conversations with people. So, Chris, what do you mean conversations with people? Well, I mean, it really could be old school, pick up a phone and call somebody. But to me, that's not efficient and I don't really enjoy that. I don't enjoy being on my phone. Uh, it, it's, it's emotionally exhausting. So, it can look like direct messages, but caution so many people are doing direct messages um, distastefully these days. And LinkedIn is my favorite example of how idiots use messaging. Like you accept a, uh, a friend request or whatever they call it on LinkedIn, right? A connection request. And immediately you're met with something in your inbox that is some spammy thing of like, hey, this is who I help. Uh, maybe we should talk so I can help you. There is no getting to, there is no even getting to know one another. It's just straight up, accept my friend request and then I ask you for business, which is not the right way to develop trust and relationship. I am not, I am not opposed to uh, having conversations with people to develop opportunities and find where uh, we could work together. I'm not opposed to that. That's, uh, in fact, at some point in your life when you go, this is what my life is for, what you're now looking for are people that you can serve. But that doesn't mean the first interaction with somebody is like, hey, hey, let's, let me, let me, why don't you buy my thing so I can help you? So there is an art to starting conversations with people 
when it comes to inviting them into your programs. And what I want to uh, invite you to consider, um, there needs to be a little bit of a reframe in order for you to feel aligned and authentic with this approach. Because if you don't, then what's going to happen is you're going to feel like you always have a hidden agenda. And for most of us in this tribe, we don't like that. We don't like the idea that I'm starting a conversation with you in order to, in order to see if you want to buy my thing. We don't like that. It, it feels mm, incongruous. It feels disingenuous. It feels... Um, it just feels like we have a hidden, hidden agenda, but, but consider this for a minute. You go to networking events for what? Why do you go to networking events? Because you can't wait to get out of the house and party because you love the way you feel at a networking event. No, you go to networking events because you're looking for business. You you're going to a networking event with, with an agenda, with an intention. We could re by the way, we could replace the word agenda with intention. That would be a good substitution. It's, it feels better because agenda feels manipulative. Intention feels like a place I come from in my soul. And they're different. But they cause the same type of behavior. You go to a networking event either with an agenda or an intention. It's the same behavior of going to the event, but the intention is different. So, or maybe the connotation of that is, is different. But anyway, look, whatever, whatever makes you feel good in your skin about it, what you have to start to realize is that uh, just creating content is not enough. You will post on Facebook till you're blue in the face for the next five years and have minuscule results because organic traffic into your programs is not a strong strategy. You just continuing to post organic posts into, onto Facebook, hoping that people find you and then miraculously reach out to you saying, oh my God, you're who I've been looking for. Please, can I buy your thing? That is few and far between. I will say that that is not, an, that is not um, impossible. It has happened for me. It has happened for people who have come through my programs. But if that is your entire strategy, you will forever be on the income roller coaster because you can't predict when the next person comes through a, a piece of content saying, I hope, uh, can I work with you? So you have to start to look for those who are interested and then you need to be safe and you need to be appropriate in how you develop that relationship. And if you develop it appropriately, there could be a place where you discover a need. And if you discover a need, you could invite somebody, that person, to apply for your program. But do you see how like you just posting all the time and thinking that that's what's going to produce the result is what par partly is what some of you have must have generated the courage to, to create content online. Good job. That is like the first step. And then some of you are posting online and you're like, well, nobody's showing up for my programs. Nobody's applying for my programs. Nobody's buying my programs. And this is where there are really two ways, two, two ways to generate traffic, right? One is through what I call proximity, which is relationship. How are you um, earning your way into relationship with people? How are you finding and, and developing relationships with people digitally, authentically digitally? When you develop relationships, people start to share more vulnerably where they're stuck. And when they share where they're stuck, there is an opportunity for you to invite them into your programs. And they have, the, they have the full right and opportunity to say yes or no. And that's not your problem. Your job is to simply start conversations to see who you can help. Because some, some in their life are stuck and ready for help. And then many, most are not. Most are not ready for your help. But some are. And some will appreciate your authentic and unique perspective about how you solve the problem they're stuck in. But that starts with a conversation. That's what I call proximity. The second, the second way to find people is through what I call priming. Priming. How do you prime a relationship to discover that you're a good fit for where they're stuck? And priming is more of, a, of, of an ad strategy. It's a, it's a paid strategy. How do you, Facebook ads, Facebook ads for the most part prime 
your people. Many people who see your Facebook ad for the first time will not click through and buy your thing. They might watch your video or a clip of your video and, and they might watch a second clip and a third clip and a year or even two years later, maybe more, they might finally feel like one, they're in a spot to do business with you and two, that they trust you enough to do business with you to actually take a step and apply for your program. But do you see like the ad on the very front end of that is the thing that primed a relationship. It was like, yes, I like how you speak about things. And then they watch a second video, third video, fourth video, 20th video. And there is this priming of a relationship. But the way that you primed it was through spending money to get the content in front of them. So, so the two ways really are proximity. How do you get in close relationship with people digitally? And two, how do you prime the relationship through spending money to put your content in front of them so they can see that you're a safe person. For most of us, we don't have the budget to go priming. Priming is an intermediate to advanced strategy for how do you move people into your conversation to do business with you, okay? So for most of us, we're left with proximity. And, if, and so, you have to see the, the two things that work here. One is having your content because your content is the thing that continues to share how you see the world and, and how you see where people are stuck, how you see them and how you see where they can go and the mindsets and skill sets that are required for them to actually make that change. Your content is the thing that has them go, ah, I like how you see the world. Yes, I can hear you. Yes, you see me. That comes from your content. It's what makes you valid and credible. And then, and then the second piece is that you begin to have conversations and that brings this into a very real frame for people because now it's not just me watching you on TV, quote unquote, right? Watching TV on my phone or watching TV on my computer. It is now you are actually reaching out to me. You, the creator of the content are reaching out to me. Me individually, me over here, Chris Angel, you're like, hey, how are you? What is going on with you? I see you. What's happening with you? Where are you going? Where are you stuck? And there's a conversation that ensues. And if I've done my content right, where you can tell that I'm trustworthy and I'm safe, you are more likely to have that conversation with me because you trust me. If I'm a spammy, salesy person, just trying to manipulate you and trick you into things with false scarcity and all sorts of other marketing uh, gimmicks, then when I reach out to you, I'm not safe and you won't. I, I, just, I just had this today. Somebody keeps emailing me. I have no idea how this guy got my email address. I did not opt in for it, but he keeps emailing me. He must have emailed me like 10 times in the last 10 days about people he wants to put on my podcast. So he obviously he's some kind of an agency or person who people hire to get them on other people's podcasts. And this guy is aggressive and in my face about why I should respond to his email to put his people on my show. I didn't ask for that. I'm not looking for that. And I'm immediately put off by his aggressive attitude about it. There's no relationship. There's nothing. He never asked me about me. He just came with a pitch and for 10 days straight has been pitching me. Finally, I just said like, look, stop emailing me. If he had just, now watch, this is important to the lesson here, right? Because if he had just started with some inquiry, who are you? Hey, I saw your, what he did well, what he did well was he talked about, uh, he, he stroked my ego and said, your show is really cool. What would have worked better is if he had told me a particular episode he liked and what that stood out to him about, like what stood out to him about that. And then he could have asked more questions. How long have you been, been in business? And then he could have asked more like, like what's your heart for people? And then he could have said like, what are some of your goals this year? And then he could have said like, what have you tried? And then he could have said, where are you stuck? And then he could have said, and then he could have said like, can I help you? How can I help you? And if he had done any of that on the front end, I would have been way more open to what it is that he's pitching because I would have felt safe with him. Same person, probably the same pitch on the end of it. 
but it took, it would have taken him like 10 additional like questions. It, 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 watch this. He emailed me 10 times pitching me, but what he could have done over 10 emails was he would have said like email one, Hey, I watched, I, I've seen your show. I really like your show. Here's what stood out to me in this episode, this episode number, whatever. And then I would have emailed him back and I would have said, Hey, that's cool. Thanks for watching. And then email two, he would have said like, Hey, like what are some of your goals this year? I'd love to help you with, with where you're trying to go. End of story, send, send that email. And I would have said, wow, thanks for asking. Here's what I'm working on. And then he email three, he would have said something like, well, wow, that's great. Like, what have you tried so far? And then, and then I would have responded. And here's what I'm working on. Here's what I've tried. Here's where I'm stuck. And then his fourth email could say, wow, here where you're stuck, where else are you stuck? And I would have said, well, this is all, this, these are the other places I'm stuck. Email five, he might, he might say, hey, th this is something I'm working on. Could this be of value to you? And I might reply, wow, that doesn't quite sound like a fit, but uh, I really appreciate you asking. Email six, hey, listen, I do every t uh, from time to time represent people who um, have a big audience who um, could share your show with other people and get your stuff known. And I could write back, right? Hey, that sounds amazing. Like I'm always looking for ways to expand my audience. Who, like who would be a good fit for my show? Email seven, he says, well, I've got this guy who would be a great fit for my show. And in that, he starts to uh, show me how that, not just having that person on my show is cool because they're whoever they are, but that he has the intention of helping me grow my audience, my show, et cetera. But that was, by the way, that was by email seven. So he sent me 10 emails or however many sent, maybe he sent me 20. I don't know, this guy's relentless. He sent me, let's say 10 though. He sent me 10 emails. He could have gotten there faster with seven emails and I would have felt much safer with him by that point if he had just done all of this relationship building and proximity stuff before pitching me. But instead he did 10 emails of pitching. What I want you to hear in this is that for you to invite people into your programs and get traction, right? Like to actually get people in, there is relationship building on the front end and you're just gonna have to do it. Unless you have thousands of dollars a day to spend in advertising, which can be super effective, then you're going to have to build your programs through proximity. That's it. Because just posting alone won't do it. You might get the occasional one or two people who are like, hey, this is really great. Can I do it? But it's not going to sustain your financial livelihood. You need to, your content provides a baseline of relationship for people. And from that, you need to then branch off into conversations with people to find out where people are stuck and if there's a fit or not. But the way that you do that is by investigating and asking questions and caring about people and caring enough about people to ask them a question. Hey, how are you? What is going on over there? How is your business in this coronavirus? What are your goals? Have you reorganized your goals? Have you restructured your goals because of this whole thing? What are you working on? What have you tried? Where are you stuck? Do you see, like, but this is the thing. Like, I feel like so many people in this digital age of social media marketing just think, oh, I'm just gonna post and I'll buy a two year, I'll buy a two year social media content calendar and then I'll just do whatever, I'll say whatever they tell me to say in my content and then that should produce leads. Real, for real? Are you serious right now? That's, you've been doing this, how long are you willing to keep doing that strategy before you realize there's more to it than that? Wake up, wake up, there's more to it than that. There is some, there is some very real relationship building that has to happen digitally for people to feel like you're safe and they can trust you. So, where does all of that start? Here's your homework assignment. Where does all of that start? It starts with a conversation. Well, 
before that, it starts with you having content. Because if you have no content and I have no way to uh, investigate you and check you out based on the content you produce and what you say, then it's going to be way harder to get past my filter. But if you have content and I can check you out before, like as you reach out to me and I can check you out, well, then you, have, you increase your chances of me responding. So from there then, having content is the, is the foundation. From there then is starting to reach out to people one-on-one, -on -one, individually, personally, through messenger, text message. I don't care what it is, email, whatever, but you're going to need to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the person, not the group, not the tribe, not the masses, but with the individual. And that will start the momentum. That will, do you hear me? That will start the momentum. And if your product is good, if, you're, if your course and your program produces a result for people, then what happens is then they start to tell others. And now we start to have some momentum, okay? But too many of you have zero momentum because you're sitting there posting, hoping that it produces a result and you're wondering why it doesn't. And it doesn't because you've missed the second half of this picture. Part one is content. Part two is reaching out and having conversation with individuals. All right, gang, that completes this episode of Marketing for the Rest of Us. If you'd like to learn more about how to start that foundation of content, right? I have a six-week program. It's my first program. And it dives into how do you start to access that message for the world? How do you have a base conversation so people can see that you're safe and can tell if they're a good fit for you or not before you ever reach out to have that conversation? If you'd like to learn more about that, go to groundswellmethod.com, watch the free videos there, and apply on the last page. Thanks for hanging out with me here. Until tomorrow, here's to you. Uh, furthering your important work in the world through proximity.